<coughs> Last time we have discussed rectangular elements for plate bending analysis. Now let's see the triangular elements, various types of triangular elements used for plate bending analysis. Now there are five types of triangular elements that we are going to discuss. A thin element consists of nine terms, so which is also called T9 element. Torture element, which also includes nine terms. The only way of assuming displacement function is different in case of either and torture element. Bell element, which consists of 10 terms, so it is also called T10 element. And the higher order terms can be introduced, more number of terms, T15 and T21 triangular elements can be used for plate bending analysis. Now let's consider first one is a thin element. A thin element. So it consists of nine terms, means degree of freedom equal to three per node. It's a standard one, W theta x theta y. So total degree of freedom equal to 9 and therefore size of k also 9 by 9 and number of terms equal to 9. So this is a triangular element, 3 noted triangular element. So this is x, y, axis system. Now here, see nine terms means here this, this is a Pascal's triangle and this is excluded. So x, y, the twist of surface is excluded and then the assumed displacement function becomes w equal to alpha 1 plus alpha 2x plus alpha 3y plus alpha 4x square plus alpha 5y square plus alpha 6x cube plus alpha 7x square y plus alpha 8xy square plus alpha 9y cube. And then the derived we can work out very easily dabba w by dabba x and then theta y dabba w by dabba y. And the further procedure for formulating element stiffness matrix is exactly similar to the rectangular element. So what we have to see how to assume the displacement function at any point within the element by using Pascal's triangle. Once you are able to assume this displacement function at any point, then theta x theta y derived degrees of freedom can be worked out and then later on this can be extended to each of the nodes and then we can write down in the matrix form then strain displacement relations are developed then stress strain relations are developed and then by using the principle of virtual work done we can find out the element stiffness matrix now here as far as triangular elements are concerned, the triangular elements can be used for irregular shapes and boundaries. So they are very very useful compared to the rectangular element for irregular shapes and boundaries where classical method fails to analyze the plate. And secondly, the element is more useful to prepare finite element mesh near openings in plate or at a sharp corner where plate is subjected to concentrated loads. So a fine mesh is possible with the help of triangular element. So triangular element as compared to the rectangular elements are more advantageous because we can prepare a fine mesh near corners, near holes or at the points where the plate is subjected to concentrated loads or concentrated stresses. 
and also it can be used to map the irregular boundaries. So therefore, this is more advantageous uh, as compared to the rectangular element. So in this element, in this element, the constant twist constant twist condition that is daba square w by daba x daba y is not incorporated therefore the element therefore the element is very stiff therefore the element is very stiff now this is about a thin element the second one is the torture element again the torture element consists of nine terms so this is also a t9 element so second one is torture element so nine terms are used so this twist condition is now considered so the displacement function assumed is this way this is combined these two terms are combined so this is alpha 1 plus alpha 2x alpha 3y alpha 4x square plus alpha 5xy plus alpha 6y square plus alpha 7x cube alpha 8 into bracket x square y plus xy square plus alpha 9y cube. So now the displacement function assumed is in this way and then the theta x theta y are worked out but here see this element does not satisfy the condition of geometric invariance for certain orientation and hence the matrix becomes a singular matrix that is the main advantage of this element the next so, <coughs> bell element. Let's consider the third type, bell element. So, it consists of 10 terms. So, how these 10 terms are considered? Say, degree of freedom equal to 3 or you can say w theta x theta y at corner nodes at corner nodes and w only at central so one more node is considered here so at central node only W is to be taken. So total degree of freedom becomes total degree of freedom is 3 into 3 plus 1 so 10 and therefore number of terms in displacement function should be 10. Number of terms assumed in the displacement function should be 10. Now So complete cubic polynomial is to be assumed. So this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Total terms are 10. So this complete is to be assumed. So W equal to alpha 1, alpha 2x plus alpha 3y, alpha 4x square plus alpha 5xy plus alpha 6y square alpha 7 
x cube alpha 8 x square y plus alpha 9 x square x y square and alpha 10 y cube. So this is the displacement function assumed for this and this theta x equal to dabba w by dabba. This we can work out easily as usual and theta y dabba w by dabba y. And then further formulation we know very well for element stiffness matrix. So here initially the matrix K is developed of size 10 by 10 and by method of condensation the additional degree of freedom is eliminated and finally the element stiffness matrix developed is of order 9 by 9. So K developed is of order 9 by 9. So by method of condensation, we can eliminate the additional degree of freedom W at the central node and final size of the element stiffness matrix will be 9 by 9. The next, in order to improve the accuracy of the results, we can use the higher order elements, say T, 15, T21, etc. Say, let's consider T15 element. T15 element. So, in this element, T degree of freedom equal to w theta x theta y at corner nodes at corner nodes and w dabba w by dabba n at mid side nodes so this is actually six noded element so we have to consider the mid side nodes so this three primary nodes this is 4, this is 5, and this is 6. So W, theta x, theta y are at corner nodes and W, dabba W by dabba n. What is dabba W by dabba n is the normal slope. Dabba W by dabba n is the normal slope. So total degree of freedom it is 3 multiplied by 3 plus 3 multiplied by 2, 6 plus 9 plus 6, 15. So therefore, number of terms equal to 15 in assumed displacement function at any point in the element. Similarly, if we consider next T21 element, T21 element. Here, the degree of freedom equal to W theta x theta y at corner nodes, at corner nodes, and this sorry, theta x theta y, then uh, additional dava w by dabba x square dabba w by dabba y square dabba w by dabba x dabba y at corner nodes so this is at corner nodes and at mid nodes only dabba w by dabba 1 at mid side nodes. This is normal slope at mid side nodes. So the total number of total degree of freedom is 3 corner nodes. So 6 into 3 plus 3. So this is 21. Therefore, number of terms 
in a Schumpe displacement function should be 21. So now look at the this Pascal triangle. Say now the further we can write down x fourth x cube y, then uh, x square y square x y cube and y fourth. Similarly, say x fifth x fourth y x cube y square then x square y cube x y fourth and y fifth so 20 fifth order polynomial so now for p 50 say p 50 say this is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 means the complete fourth order polynomial can be assumed for t 15 element and then further 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21 and for this t 21 element we can assume complete fifth order polynomial that is for for t 15 element t 15 element we can assume we can assume complete complete fourth order fourth order polynomial polynomial or displacement function w and for t21 element we can assume complete fifth order polynomial displacement function or w so that means these elements are complete. So T15, that is T15 and T21 elements are complete and confirming. Complete and confirming. So they gives us more accurate results as compared to other triangular elements. So this is about the various types of elements used for plate bending analysis. So we have finished the plate bending plate element analysis part. Now in short we will see the cell elements also. So cell elements. So for the analysis of cell type structures like uh, industrial cells, then uh, nuclear power plants, wherever we need to analyze the cell type structures, then we have to use the cell elements, various types of cell elements that we are going to discuss. Now basically in cell element, both membrane stresses or membrane analysis we can say and bending stresses are important. So membrane stresses are more predominant as compared to the bending stresses and that's why we have to consider both membrane and 
bending stresses. So the displacements U and V are considered for in plane or membrane analysis. And W, theta x, theta y are to be considered for bending analysis. And both these are important in case of cell element and therefore essential essential degrees of freedom per node for cell element are u v w theta x theta y that is 5 degrees of freedom that basically we have to consider for any type of cell element. Now there are generally we consider a three types of cell element that is flat element, then uh, curved or cylindrical element, curved or cylindrical element and third one is a solid or brick element. So in cell elements these three types of elements we generally consider. So first suppose we have a cell of this type then this is to be discretized say by using a flat element So this element, a flat element, is a four noted element and the supports are cell is supported like this. So this is a flat element. Then if it is a cylindrical cell, Then we have to make use of again say this is a curved or this element is curved or cylindrical. cylindrical element. Again this is supported like this. So here in case of flat means the boundaries of the element are straight and here the boundaries of the element are curved. So it is a curved boundary element basically. So therefore it is called curved element and a brick element say will be like this. draw the sketch of brick element this way. The boundaries may be curved or may be straight. it may be a 20 node date. Instead of this, let's try this way. It's OK. 
20 noted brick element. So we consider the nodes like this. So this may be higher order element. So 20 noted brick element. So generally boundaries are to be considered as curved boundaries. So this is flat element and this is curved element. So these are the various types of elements generally used in case of cell elements. So in much better way, I can try to draw the sketch for 20 noted brick element. So this is a brick element or solid element. the various types of cell elements that you can study. And the other theory part of cell elements that you are already studying along with finite element, the theory of plates and cells, where you can learn in detail about membrane and bending stresses membrane analysis and bending analysis of cell. So only thing is that how to identify the degrees of freedom and how it is incorporated in finite element analysis. Now the formulation of element stiffness matrix for a particular element like flat element, cylindrical element or solid element we can do exactly similar to the plate elements. So friends we will stop here and next time we will see the numerical integration part that is gauss quadrature formula to evaluate the numerical integration in finite element method thank you